Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yes today guys, on this episode of John's Arcade. Well guys, we are going back to the garage. That's right, because we are gonna finish the Atari Cloak and Dagger in this video. Yeah, this is part number two, the grand finale of the Atari Cloak and Dagger kind of restore slash refurbish video. And actually, I've been filming this video for two weeks. <laughs> and actually, in the middle of the video, I went on vacation and now I'm back. So we're gonna go back to the garage and we're gonna finish this project once and for all. And honestly, this video is not gonna be done until that Cloak and Dagger is done and ready for the basement. And actually, we have a ton to do in this video. Sanding and painting and the kick plate art and the T-molding and I wanna address the speaker and we gotta fix the comb buttons. There's so much to do in this video. So anyway, enough of that, guys. Why don't we go to the garage and let's get to work on the Atari Cloak and Dagger. All right, guys, we are back in the garage, and yes, we are getting back to work on the Atari Cloak and Dagger. This is part number two of our little restore series, and actually, I think this should be the last video. Anyway, let, let's kind of quickly review here, okay? So what do we do in the last video? Well, first of all, we replaced the speaker grill because the one that was on here was like a Frogger speaker grill with exposed wood, but this cabinet used to be a Defender, okay? This is a Williams Defender cabinet with the Atari conversion kit on it, okay? Because they sold this as a kit to convert Williams games to Atari Cloak and Dagger. So anyway, up here was a Frogger speaker grill with like bare wood and it was wrong because originally it had a plastic speaker grill just like this. Now this one right here is a repro and it's all metal. So we replaced it that, okay, and put new security screws in here. It looks really sharp. And then also we worked on the control panel right here. We cleaned this whole thing up, cleaned the joysticks. It looks fantastic. And then also <laughs> in the last video, I was really stumped because originally there was a piece of plexi across this whole thing, right? And these are the Atari cone buttons. And when we removed the plexi, it made these loose. But in the last video, it didn't click why they were loose. It was loose because we lost some extra thickness here. And now these are loose. And, and it actually originally Atari put little like Pell nuts on the bottom of these to kind of uh, work with different thicknesses of control panel. So in this video here, we're gonna have to go get some washers at the hardware store and just kind of shim this up a little bit on the bottom. Cause right now this is sticking up too far. So we'll fix that in this video. And what else? Well, the main objective of this video here is to put the kick plate art on. And over here I have that. And then also I want to do a couple little tiny things. And um, you'll notice here that I picked up some T-molding, okay? Because I don't like the white T-molding that's on the game right now because originally Defender had three quarter inch black textured T-molding. So I went on eBay and I ordered a roll of 20 feet of that. And so we're gonna replace the white T-molding because I just don't really like it. Do you guys like it? I, I don't, it's, you know, it, when I got this game, it was like the first thing I noticed. Like I just didn't like it. And then I kind of talked myself into it. I'm like, ah, maybe we'll just keep it. But it's really starting to bug me. And also there was a lot of comments in the last video because I kind of asked you guys, and I agree, we should get rid of it. Let's change that to black T-molding. And then also I picked up this little thing right here, just a little, bell and whistle kind of thing, no big deal. This is actually an aluminum plate here with the Atari logo on here. This actually kind of simulates um, these little vinyl stickers that Atari sent with the manuals and stuff in certain games. Like my Asteroids Deluxe had a sheet of stickers um, that you put on the coin door, and one of the stickers was like this. And, and they were vinyl stickers. This is actually a reproduction that someone sells on eBay. This is actually made out of aluminum. But we're gonna stick this on the coin door. It'll, it'll probably be the last thing we do in the video. And we'll just kind of stick it right there. What do you guys think? Ah, uh, it doesn't quite fit. Mm, I don't like how it fits. It's close. Yeah, I think we'll probably still put it on, but it's gonna go right there. What do, you, what do you think of that? And then also in this video, actually the first thing I wanna do is we're gonna replace the speaker, okay? Now we, in the last video, um, I struggled with this speaker topic the entire video. I got rather OCD about it, okay? And because originally on, on Defender, there was a four ohm, six and a half inch round speaker. But when we took the speaker grill apart, what we found inside was a six by nine, eight ohm speaker. And it's a round hole with an oval speaker. and It's completely wrong. And I kind of went to Walmart trying to find a new speaker. We looked around the garage. Ultimately, we just decided to keep the speaker in there. And actually, I found out 
through some research of the audio amp because there's actually a new audio amp in there because the, whoever did this conversion or the last owner, they bypassed the Williams, because originally there was a Williams power supply and Williams sound amp in here that, that, that connected to the Atari board. And the last, the previous owner, I believe, replaced all that with a switching power supply and this little, uh, this little uh, audio amp. And actually, I believe someone made a comment that this audio amp is actually from a Mr. Do. And I did some research on the audio amp chip and that chip actually is looking for an eight ohm speaker. And if you use anything less than that, you'll blow the speaker. So what I did was I went online and I went on MCM Electronics and I found this right here. This is a six and a half inch eight ohm round speaker and this is the perfect speaker for this application now i'm hoping it sounds good i hope that the audio quality is good um it's actually eight ohm six and a half it says full range guitar speaker um and it's a 15 watt speaker so they sell it like to make your own guitar amps and stuff but let's take a peek at this and i think we're going to install this right away and if it sounds good which i hope it is, hope it does we'll just kind of leave it in there but this is very, uh, this looks very much like uh, the kind of speakers you would find in these arcade games. But this was like $8, like literally $8. And, I, and in the last video, you know, I went to Walmart trying to find a new speaker and they were selling like two speakers like this for $65. So this is from MCM Electronics. And I know that someone in the John's Arcade Forum actually made a post wanting to know where to find speakers to put like in a Turtles game. And cause my Turtles over there also has a six and a half inch eight ohm speaker. And the answer is MCM Electronics. And so we'll put this in there right away here and we'll see how it sounds. And hopefully the audio quality is, is the same, but it's definitely the right form factor. So why don't we just kind of get to work here? Um, so I have to actually undo all of this, which is a real nuisance, but my, It'd be the right thing to do because we're going to be working on the front of the game. So let's go ahead and remove all this stuff. And then I've been thinking long and hard about this laminate topic because um, I had said in the last video that I wanted to put laminate on the front of the cabinet and I really rethunk that. I, I, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think that what we're going to end up doing, we're going to try to paint it and really level it off with some Bondo because I don't think, and actually Delusional from Delusional's Arcade on YouTube, he made a comment that said, you're never gonna router uh, the, the, the top and bottom of that cabinet, which means then, and, and what he's saying is that, and I, I guess I really didn't think this through completely because if I put a piece of laminate on here, which was my plan, um, I was gonna cut it widthwise, uh, which, by hand with a ruler and then take my router and just trim the top and the bottom. Well, that's not, that's impossible. <laughs> the router is just not going to allow us to do that. It's going to hit the sides and stuff. So I think what we're going to do in this video after we do this random stuff is we're going to remove these bolts uh, and washers and then we're going to remove the coin door and then we're just going to try to bondo these imperfections and fill these holes with dolls and try to get everything really flat and really smooth. We'll rattle can it and then we'll put our, uh, our, our kick plate art and the artwork's going to cover most of this. So even if we do a bad job painting it, it won't matter so much. What's really critical though is that we get it really flat so we can't see any of the imperfections through the, through the artwork. And the artwork kind of goes like this. So this whole top area here, you're going to see the black and it should be black because originally I was going to do this white. I was going to put white laminate on here. And then I talked to some guys at Southern Fry Game Room Expo about this because they went through the whole the same thing too. This is it's supposed to be black. The artwork is looking for black the way it ends. Um, and if you have white here, the artwork is like black, 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 black. And then there's like this white space in the middle that just looks completely wrong. So, anyway, all right, let, let's keep going here. <sighs> I really need to be done with this this weekend um, so we can move on to the other projects. Uh, like Mortal Kombat. But I'm actually really enjoying this project. I'm not going to lie. I think uh, all the work we have to do is, is not bad. It's kind of fun. All right, so let's... Uh, we should really remove the control panel. Uh, I feel like I have to undo a lot of the stuff I did in the last video. 
So let's just remove this so I can get the glass off. Okay. So I, you know, we're gonna have to disconnect this control panel because I, I, I want to disconnect it anyway, um, so we can fix those cone buttons. So that means I need to go in there and undo that screw I put in that's holding the the harness. So let's kind of, I'm gonna kind of just come in here, and there's a screw right up here. It's in a tough spot to get to. Let's see, you know, I'm gonna do this real quick. Hang on, this is just too awkward. Okay, I have that screw removed and I undid the Molexes for the control panel. Oh, and there's a stupid ground wire. Okay, so we should be able to just pull this out. And then we're gonna go to the hardware store and, and just find some washers so we could shim this a little bit. And that way the, the comb buttons will be perfect on the top. Okay, so now we just need to really just undo all of this. And I believe, let's turn the game off. Um, <laughs> and by the way, I, in the last video, I dropped one of the nuts back here and it fell into the monitor. And I said that, I cut away though, and then a lot of people said, did you remove the nut from the, of course I did. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> All right, let's go in here. So this, these four screws here should basically just allow us to remove this whole thing. Yep. So we just need to keep track of these screws. And then I'm gonna undo the speaker. I'm really glad I put these little connectors on here. It's really awkward, but it is very easy to get out. Just four screws holding that whole thing on. All right. All right, it's free. Okay, so let's, this thing's kind of tricky to get out, I remember. It's like a puzzle. Uh, I think I, oh, there we go. Okay, so you can see here, we put that six by nine speaker. That's the speaker that was in here. And I, and I do kind of think that the previous owner might have did that on purpose because he used that, he used that, um, he used a new audio amp that was looking for that 8 ohm speaker. I do believe that's what happened here. All right, so let's, um, I'll just throw this on this chair here. All right, let's take a look here. Okay, so the speaker is gonna have to go like this with these terminals on that side. So let's just remember that. Okay. So it's funny though, if you look at the wood, you can really tell that the speaker was replaced a long time ago. It's just like, it's got a, a wear mark. Um, but if we kind of come in here like this, we can use the original holes and I could see them all. Everything lines up perfect. So that speaker is the perfect fit for this. So let's go ahead here. And we'll just reuse the old holes. Okay, let me get a couple more screws. And we'll kind of hold that down with four. 
Uh, where did I put those? I just bought some new little wood screws. Okay, I got the screws here. All right, that's a perfect fit. Hopefully the sound quality is decent. Okay, so let's put it back together and let's just test the sound. I know I disconnected the control panel, but let's see. All right. Oh, wrong way. Actually, I want to look here at the polarity. Let's see. So positive is the furthest one away. So let me grab the screws and we'll screw that in. I remember in the last video this was really irritating to do. one just want to get one on this side not quite lining up here. Hang on. Hmm. Trying to see where the old hole is. Maybe I need to loosen it a little bit. seem right. perfectly lined up and then I'll go ahead and just do the other side real quick hang on okay I have all the screws in so everything's in there in the right spot so I'm gonna go ahead and just make my speaker connections I'm gonna have to feed the speaker wires back through and hopefully we don't ever have to take this apart again uh.
And again, the, the positive tab was the back here. And I'm assuming that the red wire with black is our positive. And the black wire with red is negative. All right, let me just turn the game on. Um, we don't have the control panel plugged in, but maybe we can still get sounds. Actually, no, I can't even start a game. Um, I have to just plug this in real quick. Let me grab the, I'm gonna plug the control panel in real quick. All right, the control panel is plugged in. So let's start a game. Sounds great. Sounds like cloak and dagger. And I got it cranked. Sounds fine. not moving. No. Alright, the leaf switch moved out of the way there, but yeah, speaker's fine. And right now it's louder than I'll ever play it. Okay, so that's fine. Let's turn it off and we can move on. Um, I wasn't able to move down because the leaf switch slid out. So we'll fix that real quick. Okay. So this leaf switch right here slid out and we'll just slide it back in. It just kind of clicks on there. It's all kind of mangled. There, that's, it's in there now. Okay. Okay, so now we need to get the coin door off. Um, so this, uh, is there connectors for that? Let me see in the back. There better be. So, uh, shoot, this goes right to the power supply for the coin door bulbs. Interesting. So, they uh, wired the coin door bulbs. And, and remember, we, we went through this with the Robotron, right? Um, so, I'm wondering if there's a, what's the easiest way to handle this? I guess we can remove the wires from the power supply. We just gotta remember where they went. Let's take a look here at what they did. Um, so these are the wires right here. So these three wires go to the power supply and we have two going to five volts and two going to common ground. Um, so orange and white Orange and yellow go to five volts. And then the two white wires are our ground. Um, that's pretty easy to remember. So I'm gonna get a screwdriver. So in the Robotron video, we actually put a fuse in between, um, which is technically the better way to handle it uh, because if the power supply were to short, um, or if you were to get a short because of the, the fuse holders, uh, it would cause the power supply to shut down. Now, w which is fine, because that's what it's supposed to do. The power supply has a, you know, kind of a short detection circuit and it shuts itself down. But if that were to fail, then the power supply would ultimately fail. Um, so we can put a fuse in line if we want. It is a little overkill. We'll see. We'll think about it. Um, I don't even know if I have the parts to do it. So let's, so orange, orange and yellow are five volts. Okay, so let, 
Let's go back there and just remove those. I'm just gonna take my screwdriver and pull the wires out. Okay, they're out. It's funny all the little things we're discovering about this game. I could solder the wires maybe to the transformer. All right, so these are out now. The ground pair is out. Okay, so it's all disconnected. So we should be able to remove this now. So orange and yellow was five volts, and then the white wires was ground. Just like so. Okay, so let's get the coin door off. And there's some nuts on the inside. So let's kind of come over here, take a peek in there. The coin door is actually in pretty good shape. I'm not going to touch it. here. Okay, and then if we look inside, there's a ground strap right here that is screwed to the side there. So we need to just unscrew that. Okay, so that's free. So it should just fall out now. All right, coin door is off right here. So we'll just put this to the side. Let's just close this up. Let's put it over here on this box. Okay, so now we got to get off these lock bar, bar lock bar lock bar washers and these look like they're just on hand tight there's one and it's leaving some rather large and ugly holes okay so what we need to do is fill those holes in because that's not going to fly these are super ugly so let me see what I have in the garage as far as dolls go and hopefully we have one that's the right size uh, let me check my doll inventory over here and I have this one and this one I got two sizes here So these are just dolls from the hardware store. So this one here doesn't go in, doesn't go in. We can make the hole larger. That doesn't go in. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do, so this hole, that's not gonna work. I think I need to enlarge the hole to 5 8 and then that will be a perfect fit. Yeah, let me see if I have a 5 8 inch drill bit. And then we'll use that. Okay, I, I have a half inch and a 3 8 um, I'm gonna try the 3 8 first. 
because this is a 3 8 inch dowel and I'm just curious and we're gonna have to make the hole a little larger. All right, so that one goes right through. So let's, let's see what happens here. All right, so that's perfect for that. That actually was gonna work well on that side. All right, so we'll put a half inch hole. See, the problem is that this side is, the left side's all chewed up. So even if we put, get the doll in here, we gotta fill all this in with Bondo, which I'd rather not do. This side is fine with the 3 8 doll. It's still a little chewed up here. <sighs> I kinda wanna use the larger doll but we're gonna make a big mess if we do. Yeah, see this side really needs the 5 8 doll to fill this in. And even still, we're gonna get a little bit of, uh, kind of like a little valley around it. Um, let me just see if I can enlarge this a little bit. And we can get this in here. Just, I just don't want the hole to be irregular. <sighs> so if we use the 3 8 inch dowel on that side, It's not bad. It's just that we got a lot to fill in, which is not ideal. I might be able to hammer that in. Yeah, that will go in. So let's cut this down. All right, I found my hacksaw. So let's um, just cut a little piece off here. So this is the 3 8 inch. I'm gonna go a little bit thicker than the cabinet. And then we'll sand down the extra. Freaking annoying. <laughs> All right. And then we'll just pound it in as far as we can, let it hang out, and then we'll just take our palm sander and get it flush. That's probably really way too thick. Um, maybe I'll cut it to size a little more. All right. All right, just hang on, let me cut this. <laughs> All right, I got them cut. <laughs> I put them on my garbage can. It was a lot easier than what I was doing over here. Um, okay, so we're gonna glue these in. And um, so this side here should be pretty straightforward. All right, let's just kinda push this in. And we'll have it hang out just a little bit. Now this glue is really hard to sand, so I don't want too much of it hanging out around here. And I have it sticking out just a little bit. Try to get it. And we'll sand that smooth. And, and we're gonna have to fill in the excess with Bondo though, because the hole was kind of chewed up on the edges. Let's just kind of get it as flush as we can. And then just make sure it's just at least taller than the cabinet. So it sticks out a little bit so you have something to sand down. Okay, this other side here, it's gonna be a little harder to get in, but I think it will go in. We're gonna just try to carefully hammer it in. I 
and uh, we'll just see what happens here. But this is going to... Yeah, it's going. All right, that's in there. That is not coming out. I think I'm gonna stop there. It's really sticking out. We're gonna have to maybe take our saw and just try to cut it as flush as we can. I don't want to go too far though. And we could probably safely work on that right now because <laughs> that's not coming out. <laughs> we don't need any glue for, ah! What the heck did I just hit? Let me see if I can carefully do this. And the answer is yes. All right. And then we'll be able to sand that smooth. Okay, so we're gonna let the glue dry. Um, and then we'll come back. I'm gonna put the back door on. We're gonna lay the game on its back. Um, this one, yeah, that's really in there. We might be able to start working on this right away. All right, let me find the back door because I, I want to lean the game on its back and I'd, I'd rather do that with the back door on. So let me put that on there real quick. All right, I got the back door on. So let's lean this thing on its back. Um, carefully. This thing has casters on it, which I actually kind of dig. Um, let's kind of get it a little more central here. All right, here we go. And hopefully I don't break my back. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we're working at, looking at here. Um, okay, so we need to sand all this smooth. Um, we need to fill this in. Corners aren't too bad. Um, this, someone painted this already, okay? Um, so I'm really just concerned about this panel. We're not gonna be doing anything else but that. And we gotta fill this in, make this smooth, and then we should just sand, and there's little imperfections here and there. Nothing too bad. We should just clean this up a little bit too before we start working on it. Just kind of be careful. I don't get any inside. Okay. So I guess we'll get our sander out and we'll just kind of roughen up the whole thing and and just kind of expose the wood over here where we're going to bondo. This edge is not really bad, but I guess we can try to smooth it out. Let me grab my sander and get it set up and hopefully I got sandpaper for it. Okay, I found my sander. Um, there's a piece of 80 on here. We'll just see how it works. And if it doesn't, we'll change it real quick, but let's just see what happens. Okay, so I sanded this. This is very flush. This is flush. Um, remember, this was kind of chewed up, so there's some holes in here we're gonna have to fill in, but the doll itself, itself is pretty flush. It's funny, over here I sanded this um, 
and it kind of smoothed out the area that I was going to fill in with Bondo. It's actually not bad. <laughs> Wow, it's like really smooth now. I'm gonna put on a little higher grit. Do we maybe not even have to bond with this? All right, I'm gonna throw some 120 grit on my sander and we'll just kinda make it a little smoother, hang on. Obsess the past with coming in. Okay, we're done. Um, I think that's a, enough sanding. And probably is a good idea to um, <laughs> fill this in with paper so sanding dust doesn't get inside the cabinet. It's not too bad, actually. Um, maybe I'll vacuum it before we put it up on its side, but I'll probably, I'm definitely gonna fill this in with newspaper though before we spray paint. And of course you could see right here, the, um, the Defender artwork coming through. All right, so let me mix up some Bondo and we'll just go to work here. Um, yeah, let me do that real quick and we'll be right back. Okay, so this is just regular old automotive Bondo and we use it all the time on the channel here. Um, so I dumped some on a paper plate and hopefully this is okay, this is from last year. Um, and then it's a two part mix, you use the base and then this hardener and you wanna just mix it up till it's like a nice kind of pinky salmon color. like so and then you got about uh, five minutes or so depends on the, how warm it is but we don't have a lot of time here so I'm gonna clean off my tool just because I don't want a big mess here when I do this I'm gonna try to just use the least amount as possible sometimes that's wishful thinking but let's just kind of come in here and just fill this in try not to go too crazy here Okay. And then over here, we had some issues. So let's let that dry. We might have to put more in here. Okay, and then on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. Just kinda come in here, fill that in. Just like so. All right, that looks pretty good. I just put just a little bit more in here. Okay. Okay, um, and then I, there's a little ding right here. Just kind of fill that in. Some dings over here. There's some dings here. Uh, there's a ding right there. Ding right there. Pock marks in here. Here. A little something there. A little something over here. And then this edge here. It's not that bad, but let's just see if we can fill it in a little bit.
I really need, I got a straight edge here on the bottom, but. Let's see if we can fill this in. We're gonna have to rattle can that bottom now. It's not too bad. This stuff's starting to harden right now. So we're running out of time. Okay, so that's filled in. All right, let's let this dry and then we'll come back and sand it all down and see how smooth we got it. All right, we're all dry here. It's been about eh, 20 minutes or so. So why don't we go ahead and sand this with the 180 grit. Okay, we're all done. Um, massive success, really. Very smooth, can't feel anything. Um, made a bit of a mess here. I, you can see I covered up the hole here with some paper. So, but this is just smooth. No imperfections here. Eh, maybe you can do a little more sanding over there. I don't like that spot. Maybe I'll put some fresh paper in here. Hang on. Okay, that's actually better. I, you know, I removed most of the Bondo, right? But what's left is in the low spots right here and over here and right here. And then this stuff here is very superficial. There's a little bit of marks right there. Let me just smooth this out. So yeah, you cannot at all detect or feel any of that when you go over it. So what Bondo is left is just in the low spots. And this actually turned out pretty well over here. Okay, so we gotta paint this. Um, of course, the hardware store is closed. Mm. I kinda wanna prime this. Um, let me clean up here and we'll come up with a game plan. So um, we gotta really tape all this off too. Um, so we don't get any overspray on the game. You know, we're gonna have to come in here like with this, you know, and just kind of tape all this off. Um, just get a bunch of cardboard and just fill all the voids in. Cause we're just gonna go ch -ch 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 right here. And we're gonna replace the T molding. Um, just don't wanna, I don't wanna get any overspray on the sides cause that would be really bad. So we gotta be really careful how we do this. Um, and we're gonna have to spray this bottom edge here. So let's clean up and then let's get ready to mask all this off. All right guys, it's the next day here. Uh, and actually I just moved computer space ball over here so it's not in the way when we're painting. I don't wanna get any overspray on computer space ball. So last night actually off camera, I kind of taped this all off and put some paper over it so that when we're painting, we don't get any overspray on the sides. Now I plan on kind of painting like from this side over here you know, ch -ch 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 -ch. so the paint's gonna kind of all be going like that. So there's really no risk of it getting on this side. And then we'll probably switch sides to over here and then spray away. And there's really no risk at all of getting paint on the sides. Cause that would really stink. Um, also what I did off camera, I took some sandpaper by hand and just sanded the edges because the palm sander couldn't get all the way in here and the old paint was still kind of really shiny so I wanted to knock all that down so everything is kind of nice and uniform and then I just started cleaning it a little bit I just put some simple green like on a paper towel uh, just to kind of get all the dust and stuff off um, but I think we're ready to paint this and I'm hoping so here's the deal it's Sunday it's about it's a little after 12 o'clock okay and I really want to put the artwork on today. And technically you're supposed to wait 24 hours for the paint to dry. Um, but the weather sure is warm. I'm wondering if we can get away with doing this all in one day. 
Um, we're gonna play it by ear. Um, I'm sure if I do it today, you guys are gonna be, I, I, I can just picture the comments. <laughs> John, you should have waited a day. So anyway, I went to Ace Hardware. I picked up some of this uh, Universal Satin Paint and Primer in one. This is my, my go-to paint for everything. And we're just gonna go ahead and put some coats on here. I'm kind of hoping that we can put a few coats on right now in the next hour. Because uh, you're supposed to put coats on within one hour, okay? So we'll put a coat on right now. Maybe I'll wait 15, 20 minutes, then put another coat, maybe wait 20 minutes and put another coat. We'll probably put three coats on. And then we could pretty much let it dry to the touch and then start. Then we could take all the tape and the paper off and start working on the other aspects of the cabinet, like the tea molding, um, while everything's drying. So I'm just trying to really shake this up here. So let's see. All right, let's just go for it. All right, here we go. Okay. Yeah, I think this is gonna work fantastic. And then we'll go on the other side. We actually have to spray paint the bottom too um, because I did kind of bond with this. And I put a little bit of uh, tape in, in that hole there because that's where the, um, gotta be careful about my overspray here. Like seriously, be careful. All right, that's kind of dangerous right there. All right, that's good. Now let's come on this side. This is why I wanted to do the laminate, by the way, because I didn't want to deal with all this paint and masking. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry for about 20 minutes and I'll come back and we'll do it in our coat. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, you could see <laughs> I undid what I did because I didn't like it. Um, I put on a second coat and I'm looking at it and my prep work was just not good enough. Um, there was just too many bumps and stuff from the paint below and I, I just didn't like it. So I just sanded it all off and now it's completely smooth. And I also think what we're gonna do differently this time is I'm gonna prime it first. Instead of using the paint and primer in one, we're gonna use just a straight up primer. Now this is black primer. They have all kinds of different colors. So I picked the flat black one. And again, you know what? Don't be afraid to redo your work because I, I really didn't like it, you know? And this is also why I really wanted to use the laminate because this really is a pain in the butt, you know? I just really want this to be smooth and I don't wanna see any of the bumps or anything um, through the artwork. So let's give this a try here. Now, technically, I think you're supposed to spray with the grain, but the way this is set up, it seems really risky for me to do that. I'll get overspray on my artwork, and I, I'm not going to do it. Uh, so I'm going to go against the grain, but only because I just don't want to get any paint on my artwork. And the way I have everything taped off here, it feels pretty safe. So let's shake up this primer. I'll probably put two coats of primer on and then let the last coat dry for maybe a half hour and then we'll put on our paint. And I did really wash this down. And since we really got this bare wood, I feel better using a primer So we're gonna let this dry, and then I'll come back and put another coat on. Okay, I'm gonna let that just kinda dry a little bit. We'll wait maybe like 15 minutes, and I'm gonna come back and put some more on. Okay, I'm back. So I'm gonna put a second coat on. I'm telling you right now though, this is 10 times better, 50 times better than what it was. 
It's so smooth. So that was a good move, really. I'm not seeing anything from the paint below or any of the little imperfections that I was seeing before. I'm really glad I redid it. All right, let's go ahead here and just put another coat on. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll decide if we wanna do one more coat. We might. Looks so much better. All right, I'm gonna put a third coat on and my God, this looks good. <laughs> so glad I redid it, like seriously. And you know what? I think primer, I gotta start using it more. That paint and primer in one, I, I don't know not the same. All right, so we're gonna let this dry and then we'll probably move on to our final paint. So over here, the dowel rod hole has completely disappeared. Here you can see it a little bit, but I think once we paint it, it'll hopefully disappear. So anyway, let's let this dry and we'll come back. Okay, um, it's been about eh, 20 minutes, a half hour. It's pretty much dry to the touch. Uh, we're ready to do our painting now. Um, this really does look good though. It's just like 10 times better than it was and I'm really glad I started over. I truly am. Again, just, you know, don't be afraid. <laughs> I just didn't like what I was seeing uh, at all and uh, I, I'm really glad we started over. So, all right, I'm gonna hit it with a light coat of this. Uh, again, Rust-Oleum Universal Satin Paint and Primer in one. And maybe we'll do two to three coats here. I mean, that finish just looks fantastic. And at the end of the day, all we're gonna see under the artwork is like right in here and a little bit on the sides, top and bottom. So most of this, like 98% of this is gonna be covered with the artwork. All right, here we go. I'm kind of nervous, like the primer looks so good, I wanted to just continue. All right, I'm gonna just let this dry and then we'll come back and do another coat. Okay, let's let that dry and we'll come back. All right, it's pretty much dry. I'm gonna go ahead and put another coat on. I can tell over here it's a little shinier than like over here. So we're gonna try to just even this out. Could be too that it's just a very light coat and inconsistent right now. Because I'm painting black on black too, I can't really tell like where I'm covering and where I'm not. All right, we're gonna let this dry. And then we'll come back. The main thing for me is that it's smooth and smoother than it was. So when the vinyl goes on, it's gonna look great. And again, we're only gonna be seeing the edges. So, all right, let's let that dry. All right, guys, I just put a final coat on. It looks okay. It's hard to say right now because it's still kind of wet in here. And hopefully it dries nice and even. I mean, that flat primer for sure just looked even and smooth, whereas the 
the kind of satin or semi-gloss, you know, it's very easy to get these kind of high spots. But overall, it, it looks very smooth, and I think when we put the uh, artwork on there, it's going to be just fine. So while it's drying, I thought we could kind of move on to the control panel, because in the last video, uh, I was a little stumped. <laughs> and you guys kind of figured it out for me, because when, when we removed the plexi that was on the control panel, uh, it, it basically was adding a little bit of thickness to the control panel and these cones are actually sitting higher and so after I removed the plexi it created this situation where the red part of the cone button is real high and it's just kind of loose so I went to the hardware store and I found um, some washers and I think this is all we need to do to just kind of tighten this all up I gotta figure out where we're gonna do this I've made quite the mess here um, but I got these washers where am I going to put this thing? I guess we'll put it over here. So, anyway. <laughs> These washers right here, um, they are machine, I don't know, they're, they're just washers. They're, they're for a specific application. I have no idea what. I actually brought uh, an Atari comb button with me to the hardware store and and just kind of just mashed it up here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to basically just remove the the cone button oh no the wiring came off here so let's put that back on so let's just kind of remove this and it's just on hand tight now the original cone buttons I've seen these little nuts that they put on here right on this thread okay <clears throat> that this doesn't have it so we're going to put this washer here which is going to kind of shim the whole thing down a little bit and then we should be able to just kind of hand tighten this and it should yeah see that's way better okay so there's that one with the uh, washer there's one without and that's perfect And then we'll just add this washer in here. The one thing that's really curious to me too is that these comb buttons do not light up. And I don't know what to make of it. Oh, look at this. I just noticed something. We have two different kind of, of uh, cones, I believe. I believe this is... There's two styles on here, I think. This is a very smooth metal. And then this one, is it plastic? I think I have um, some of those in my, in my little parts bin. Let's see if we can match those up. Those are not identical. All right, I want my parts bin. And I have these, um, which are both kind of smooth. They're plastic, I think, ultimately, but they have kind of a metal feel to them. This one looks like it's got burnt by a cigarette. Um, but on here, it looks like one has a slight texture to it, and one does not. Like, this one has a texture. Let's take this off and just take a look at it. Yeah, it has a slight texture. So why don't we put on one of the other ones I had, which is more smooth. I don't know, that doesn't even quite 100% match. And it probably matches a little bit better. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Very subtle, though, this texture that's on here. You guys can see that. Yeah, it's just not smooth like the other ones. Okay, so that's that. Um, I guess, let's see, what can we do? I kind of want the paint to dry a little bit more before we start touching the cabinet. Because what I want to do is I want to put the T-molding on right now while the cabinet's still drying and while it's on the ground. Um, I'm going to wait about a half hour, though, before we start removing all this tape. And I think that we're going to let this kick panel dry overnight 
before we put the artwork on, which means this video is now into the next week because it's Sunday here. I just don't want to rush this. I, I, I don't feel comfortable putting the, the kick plate artwork on paint that hasn't dried for 24 hours at least. Um, we're just not going to rush this. So the video is going to be late, but I, I think it's going to ultimately be worth it for the project. So, um, okay, I'm going to let it dry. We'll come back like in a half hour and, and we'll start removing all the masking tape and all that. All right, guys, um, I removed all the masking tape and the paper. So we're ready to do the, uh, the tea molding um, because there's white tea molding on here and I just don't like it. Um, I tried talking myself into it. Ultimately, though, I don't like it <laughs> because it should be black. Originally, this was a Defender cabinet with black textured tea molding. So let's change it. Um, I just think it's going to look a lot better. And, you know, this is white, smooth. I, I don't know. I, I think it would look better with the contrast here up front. So someone put on these, like, hard corners here. And, and you'll see this a lot, these kind of operator mods. Um, I'm going to let this stuff go because I really don't want to mess with the original artwork. Um, I feel very fortunate to have a cloak and dagger conversion that has the original artwork on the sides, okay? So we're not going to mess with it. We're just going to leave these kind of operator corners and all that. I um, mean, you can see why they put these corners on here. Um, so anyway, let's lift this out and hopefully, oh boy, this stuff's liquid nailed in. Oh boy. <laughs> oh no. Is that, they glued the T-molding down. Is that going to be across the board? No. All right, we got a bit of a problem here. Yeah, we really do. So they used liquid nail. God bless America. We got a mess in our hands now. Uh, I mean, I can get my router and we can router that out. Should have just left it, huh? But this is all glued in here. Glue is glued. It's glued everywhere. <laughs> Son of a gun. Boy, this, this simple little restore is not a simple little restore. So we got to get this glue out of here. So if I take my router and just go, it, it should, we should be able to clear, clear out these grooves. All right, let me get my router, son of a gun. Okay, I got my router. And uh, so we're using this bit right here. Uh, this is a router bit, 63-100, two inch. Um, it's a slotting cutter with quarter inch arbor, okay? and it goes 9 16th of an inch deep and it makes a 1 16th of an inch slot. Okay, so we've got it on our router right there. Um, I have my safety glasses out here too. When you do this, it tends to throw this stuff all over the place. So I definitely advise wearing safety glasses. All right, so I'm gonna put these on. Actually, let's, let's line it up first. So basically, this is the old Craftsman one here. You, you adjust the depth right there. And so let's kind of get this to fall into the slot. So right there, okay? And then we'll tighten it up. Okay, so let's see. So that's pretty perfect. You know, normally I do this, it's uh, the cabinet's on its side. Do, do, do. So do I want to flip the cabinet? This is a, this feels a little risky, doing it like this. With the blade exposed. So we only need to clear I 
is this thing not turning on? It's locked. Uh, I'm gonna try it like this. If I do this wrong, don't be a John. <laughs> This is making a mess. All right, it's working. All right, I threw some paper towels over the paint. It's totally dry. I just don't want that stuff all over it. All right, let's just finish it up down here. This is a little hairy, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so now we gotta come down here. Let's get this. Let's just try to protect this as good as we can. We're gonna have to just blow this, or vacuum this whole game when we're done here. All right, so we have some glue. This is gonna be kind of tricky right here. So this corner... That corner is gonna probably give us trouble when we put the team holding on. The gap's a little wider here. Um, we can maybe fill it in with some hot glue or something. I'm just gonna clean it. All right, that all looks good. Let's just take a look over here. There's glue right here. This is kind of nerve wracking. All right. All right, that's all clear. I need to get the back here. All right. What a mess. <laughs> all right. And then this should look like looks like it's all okay up here. And that's clear. Whew. All right, so let's see what the other side's like. This is just full of sawdust. And this is clear. It's kind of full of, uh, you just run it across back here. So I went ahead and did the other side. Other side wasn't nearly as bad. I, and then I just took my vacuum cleaner right there and just vacuumed all this up. So we're clean again. So let's go ahead and um, let's put our T-molding on. Um, the other side wasn't nearly as bad. I, I only had to take my router like in two or three spots. This side was really bad though. Um, and obviously they they uh, glued it on because it's it's not it's loose, right? The grooves are stretched out. So let's see what happens when we do this. Um, all 
What I like to do is use hot glue instead of liquid nail. <laughs> it's just a lot less permanent. Um, so this is very loose. This is not so bad around this corner. Uh, this is gonna, this is gonna suck, isn't it? Um, let me get my glue gun, <clears throat> and we'll just have it ready as we need it. Hopefully we don't have to go too much with, too nuts with the glue. All right, give me a second here to find it. All right, I got the glue gun. Let's give this a try here. So with the team molding that's stretched out like this, you have two choices. Fill it with Bondo, recut it, or hot glue it in the spots where it's really loose. I, I think that we're gonna kind of encounter that most of the team molding groove is gonna be fine and it's gonna be stretched in certain areas like up here where, where they did the liquid nail. So I'm just gonna put some in here and let's see if we can get this in. Okay, and then the liquid nail works obviously, but <laughs> it's like seriously permanent. All right, where's my side cutters? So on the corner here, we should probably cut a little bit out with the side cutters. And we're gonna just basically just cut a little of the barb out so we can make this corner a little easier. And let's see if it stays in. No, it wants to lift out right here. So let's throw some more hot glue in there. Wipe the excess off, and then, and then to make that bottom c c curve, we're gonna have to cut some of the barb as well. <sighs> you know, this cabinet is not very tall. And it, I mean, it, well, it's, it's the normal height, but the T molding only goes on the front, so it doesn't really require a ton of T molding. <sighs> Let's see if this stuff wants to stay in here. So we definitely want to put some in here. See if so. This groove here is fine. Okay, so over here, I have to cut the barb so we can make this corner. I already like the black better. What do you guys think, huh? I'm just removing enough of the barb here so we can make the turn. That's not too loose. Yeah, it wants to pop out on the top. <sighs> Looks 
good. And let's just keep going down here. Alright, so now we gotta make this turn here. <clears throat> See why the guy used that liquid nail. Let's throw some in here. Okay, we're home free now. All right, so that's one side. <sighs> Wasn't so bad. Other side's a lot less worse. And then we'll take our cutters here and just trim this. So, and then I can just throw a little bit in here at the end. Okay, so that's one side. Let's put that little corner guard thing back on. like so. Not original. Mm. Okay, so this one was on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and do the T-Moldy on the other side the same exact way, and then we'll come back. All right, guys, uh, the other T-Molding is on the other side. It was uneventful. I think I used the hot glue like in two spots, and I probably didn't even need to use it, but already I like the black T-Molding better. So, all right, here's what we're going to do. It's Sunday. So I'm not releasing this video until we're done, and but we cannot finish today because I just don't feel comfortable putting the artwork on that paint. Now the paint is dry to the touch, okay? I mean, it's completely dry, you know? I've been putting stuff on it, whatever. It's dry, okay? It's smooth, it looks pretty good, um, but I really feel like I should really let that paint dry overnight. Um, and then tomorrow, we'll put the kick plate art on, 
it looks smooth and I really think that um, most of it will be covered up so as long as it's smooth that's all I'm worried about uh, you know the inconsistent blacks you know you could see the wood grain too um, like whoever painted the bottom here I could tell they used a roller and some seriously thick paint um, whereas this we just sprayed the bare wood and you can see the wood grain and stuff but I don't think that's going to project through to the artwork but we'll see um, so yeah I'm gonna stop right here we'll pick this up tomorrow um, and we'll put the uh, kick plate art, art on all right I'll be back all right guys we're back um, yeah this is totally dry actually it's been over a week <laughs> you know I painted this it dried overnight I was gonna do it one week night night last week and uh, it was rainy it was miserable and the next thing I know I'm, I'm on vacation so I'm back from vacation so I've been filming this video now for two weeks <laughs> but anyway it looks pretty good however uh, you know there's a slight wood texture here um, you know, we've got several coats of primer, uh, several coats of spray paint, but we have a slight kind of plywood texture here that I'm not sure will transfer through to the artwork. And again, you know, this is kind kind of why I wanted to do uh, the laminate because I because I don't want to deal with this. And and here we are dealing with this. It's probably fine the way it is, but I thought maybe we should just wet sand it a little bit. And I have some like 600 grit sandpaper here soaking in water and I want to just wet sand this a little bit and see what happens and we got to be careful here because this can make a giant freaking mess um because we're going to have basically like liquid paint dust everywhere but I just kind of want to see what happens if I come in here but you know we we got this wood grain though I don't know how we're going to overcome that I think I might need to go to 400 here. This might be too fine. And I'm just sanding this with a wood block. I just don't want to go too crazy. I gotta be careful about this liquid paint dust going everywhere. But maybe we can knock down some of the very slight texture on this. Again, I just don't want to drip this everywhere. Kind of clean this off and see what it looks like. Mm, it's definitely smoother. Yeah, I kind of think that actually helped. You know, we still have a very fine texture here, but where I sanded looks pretty good. I'm gonna sand a little bit more, and I think we're gonna just stick with the 600 grit. It feels the safest. I just don't want it to drip this black paint juice everywhere. And it's very hard to get to the edges here. Get some more water. So I'm gonna keep going here. I'm gonna just sand this a little bit more and then we'll move on. All right, I sanded a bunch here. It's definitely smoother than it was 
a little bit of the grains coming through. Um, I think it's going to be fine. So we're going to just go for it. So we're going to use the wet method here, okay? And I'm going to use rapid tack. And we've used it in the videos before. This is a cleaner and application fluid. Um, so I'm going to clean the piece of wood first with this, okay? So we'll just clean this up. I mean, you can, I, I've never used like soapy water or Windex, but I, I know guys have said that you can. I've always just used this Rapid Tack. I think this stuff is great. And I've never had any issues with it. And if you screw up, the benefit of using this is that you can lift up the artwork and, and re reapply it. So I'm gonna need my squeegee. We're gonna need some masking tape. Um, so here's my little squeegee here. Um, I bought this on Amazon or I don't remember. I think Amazon and it came with the squeegee here. So we're gonna have to cut this down. Boy, this is gonna look good, isn't it? So the artwork here, it kind of starts right there. So I'm gonna trim this down because it's too wide. So I'm gonna carefully come in here and just trim to the right of the artwork. I'm gonna do the same on the other side here. Let's just kind of just make sure. Don't want to cut the artwork. Okay. So then we'll use this to kind of center this on here. All right. So I'm gonna trim the top and bottom too, so we can really kind of center this a lot easier. And again, I'm gonna double check where the artwork ends. It ends right at the black there. bottom here. Okay. Alrighty. So this can be a little nerve wracking because we, we really get one shot here and we don't want to screw this up. <laughs> um, I mean, with the wrap attack again, you know, you, you do kind of get the ability to lift it up if you really screw up, but <clears throat> I try to get it right the first time here. Um, so, okay, so we just got to center this on here and I don't really want to eyeball it. Boy, that looks pretty center, doesn't it? So we've got, I wonder if I should favor the bottom a little bit more because the control panel kind of hangs over here and I don't want it really touching the artwork. So I kind of want to be closer to the bottom than the top. All right, I'm taking my T-square here <clears throat> and I'm measuring about an eighth inch, uh, almost a quarter of an inch from the top here. I'm just gonna clamp this down. Let's see if we can do it like, ah, shoot. So let's go down to there. Not 
quite right. I'm going to keep going here, just basically trying to get everything to line up with the third line on here, all the way across, and then have it centered left and right. All right, I think I got it in a good spot here. Um, I'm pretty close to the edge down here. There's going to be maybe 16th of an inch between the bottom of the artwork and the bottom of the cabinet. Again, I'm okay with that because that control panel hangs down here. Um, now I'm looking at this, I, by the way, I put some clamps here. This is going to be a little nerve wracking, I think. Um, <laughs> because of the, this is U-shaped, I think this is not going to be that fun. I guess we'll start with this side here and we're going to basically do one half at a time. So I'm going to just going to kind of come in here. Just we'll do this half first. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to lift this up, okay? And we're going to cut the paper and we're going to do this half first, then remove the other side and do the other half. And again, we're going to be using the wet method. Um, so let's go ahead here and start tearing our paper off. Every time I do this, it's a, it, I get nervous. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times you do this, it's, it's nerve wracking. Okay. So we'll do that much first. All right, you guys ready? Okay. Alrighty, so now we're gonna spray this down. All right, here we go. Trying to keep the air bubbles out of here. And that wrap attack helps with that. All right. the other side. Same deal. I guess we don't need to spray right there. Okay. Let's go on the other side.
All right. So we're dripping this stuff everywhere. Okay, I think we're done. I'm just gonna kind of come down, push all the liquid out, any air bubbles. All right, so now we're ready to remove the pre-mask and the wrap attack instructions say to soak the paper with this. So we'll soak the, the pre-mask with the wrap attack. We'll let it just soak for a minute or two and we'll peel it off. All right, we'll come back in a second here. I'm gonna clean up too. Getting excited. All right, it's been like a minute or two here. Let's, let's peel this off and see what happens. Oh, that looks good. Got some air bubbles. Oh, that looks fantastic. I think we did a really good job here. What do you guys think, huh? Look at how beautiful that looks. Just wipe all this down. Oh, I think it turned out great. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> I truly love it. Um, so let's just kind of scrutinize our work here. I see very trivial little air bubbles, very, very minor. I'll tell you, um, you know, I think our sanding work on the wood was, was actually a success because Really not seeing any of the wood grain. Over here is a little bit. It's very, very trivial though. Oh, that looks good. Guys, this looks really good. Damn, that looks good. <laughs> Let's kind of get in close. I'll, I'll show you guys the up close and graphic here. So I think it's very smooth. A little something in there, very, very subtle. Right here, there was a bit of grain. So subtle though. I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. I think it looks fantastic. And real nice straight edge here. Very centered. I think coming down was the right thing to do because that control panel is going to go like this. So, boy, that looks great. Oh my God, we're almost done. <laughs> I love this. Boy, that really pops, doesn't it? It like finishes off the whole cabinet. Unbelievable. All right, so we got to put on, yeah, I mean, you could definitely see a little bit of that wood grain right in here. It's so minor though. I'm not, I, honestly, I'm not going to lose sleep over this. All right, so let's, let's lift the game up. I, I guess we start putting it back together here. Um, I want to clean it up too and all that. So we're going to have to really clean this thing up. We got dirty the back of it. 
Um, let's take a look here. What do you guys think, huh? I, you know, listen, I think we did a great job. That really pops. And once we put it all back together, it's going to be amazing. So I guess we'll put the coin door on real quick. Um, we're going to have to wire back up. So let's throw this in here. like so. So let me get the nuts. So I can see there's a ground strap here. All right, so I'm gonna get my socket set and I'm gonna tighten this down real quick. I mean, there's nothing more than four nuts. I need to tighten on the inside and then we'll come right back. All right, guys, the coin door is back on. I hooked up the Molex here. Now I did wire up the five bolts to the coin door just like the previous owner did. He had it tapped into the power supply. Now when we did the Robotron this way, we actually put some fuses in line as kind of an extra step, okay? But technically the power supply, if there was a short up here, the power supply, because it's a modern switching power supply, will shut down. But if you guys wanted to, as an extra little safety feature, you could put the inline fuse. Go watch the Robotron video. We did that in that video. I don't have the parts right now to do that. So maybe we'll come back and revisit this topic later. For now, I'm going to wire it up the way the previous owner had it. It was working fine. Okay, so what should we do here? Also, I did vacuum out the back of the cabinet. All kinds of like dust and crap just kind of fell in there when we were working on it. Um, so we're looking pretty good here. I mean, honestly, we're, we're pretty much done. Um, I, I just need to put it back together, right? And uh, I want to make sure we're nice and clean before we button this up. Um, we should Windex the, the monitor and all that in here before we put the bezel back on. Um, so why don't we do that real quick? Where'd my paper towels go? Um, but yeah, I'm feeling this. <laughs> it looks pretty good. back together here um, looks pretty good I just want to wipe it down real quick um, I kind of want to put this on yeah it just doesn't quite it's not quite the right size it's very close though I think I'll be fine let's put it on there I'll just wipe it down a little bit a little wrap attack clean it up I think this will be a nice touch, don't you think? <laughs> the Atari badge. All right, let's see if we can center this the best that we can. Right there. I think there's a film on the top of this. Maybe not. All right. We look legit now. Is there a film on this? No, I guess not. All right, so that's on there. <laughs> I'm determined to remove a film from here. I don't think there is one. No. Okay. Hey, I like that. It looks pretty legit. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just like, just simple green the heck out of this thing. Let's just clean her up. It looks good. <laughs> it looks real good. Is it perfect? No, it's not. Not even close. There's a lot of 80s battle scars on this thing, but you know what? It's original artwork and I'm not touching it. So it, it, it's very presentable. It's gonna look dynamite in the basement. We should plug it in, make sure it's still working. <laughs> then also let's kind of review. Uh, you know, we did a lot on this thing, a lot of small, annoying, time-consuming things. Um, this took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. Um, now, when we got it, it was missing the, the kick plate artwork right here. Okay, so we sanded that all down. We primed it, we painted, we put this on here today from Richard, this old game. It looks fantastic, it looks right. Now, we can see some of the wood grain. I kind of knew that was gonna happen. We're gonna let it go, okay? We could have put the laminate on and maybe I should have done that. I don't know. I talked myself out of it at the last minute and decided to, to just paint and bondo and all that. And really, I don't know how we would have gotten around that wood grain with just paint. I guess lots and lots of paint, but it looks pretty good. Now the control panel, I think looks a lot better. When we got it, it had a, a piece of plexi over it that I did not like. This is an original control panel overlay. It looks dynamite. Um, we removed that plexi. As a result, we had to kind of shim up these buttons here. We put some washers underneath. Uh, we sanded and cleaned up the, uh, the, the Wicco joysticks here. These are like eight-way Robotron style joysticks. They look really good. And we cleaned up the dust washers. Looks fantastic. Sanded and painted the bolts. Control panel looks dynamite. I kind of want to replace this button. I don't really like it that much, but we'll, we can maybe do that later. On the top here, um, when we got the game, there was a Frogger speaker grill here. We removed that, put this reproduction on here. Also replaced the speaker, because the speaker we found in there was a six inch by nine inch oval shaped speaker speaker originally because this was a defender cabinet yeah this is a, a defender cabinet atari sold a kit to convert defender originally the defender had a six and a half inch round four ohm speaker in there however the previous owner removed the robotron sound amp and replaced it with what i believe to be a mr do sound amp right here that's looking for an eight ohm speaker so we replaced the oval one with a six and a half inch round eight ohm speaker and it looks right and it sounds good. And then we also replaced all these screws here. There was a hodgepodge of just all kinds of different screws here. We put some Williams slash Atari style security screws here and on the top also. And then really we just cleaned the whole thing up, replaced the T-molding, that's right, we did do that because there was white T-molding on here originally, which was wrong. It was bugging me because originally, again, this was a Defender, it would have had black T-molding. Now this looks right. However, it does kind of really call out on the bottom that it has those little corner protectors on there. You know, operators did this kind of stuff all the time in the 80s, like, cause these corners would get blown out and they would put these kind of metal brackets on the corners to kind of cover up the, the damage. And because those are painted white, it really shows it off now with the black T-molding. But we're gonna let it go because I'm not messing with those corners because again, original side art, We'd have to really cut that corner, bondo, sand, all that business, and we really risk ruining that original side art. And I just am very happy that I have original side art. I'm not touching it. <laughs> I mean, this is a good looking game. You know, it, it's kind of a refurbished game. We didn't really do the full giant restore, but I don't think we needed to. I think it looks very, very handsome. But let's let's make sure it's still working, by the way, because um, we kind of moved the control panel. And when we get it in the basement, we'll do a proper video here. All right, let's just make sure the joysticks are all working still. I know it's really sunny out here. I might have to turn the volume down. Something's wrong. Here. The guy is not showing up on the screen, guys. 
All right, let's... Hmm. Why is it doing that? Hang on, let me investigate the, the connection in the back. All right, it's all fixed. Um, You know, we had the game on its back. And I just reset the edge connector. We might have kind of stressed it a little bit. Let me... uh. Volume's way too loud. All right, everything works still. So guys, we're done. <laughs> we finished another quote unquote restore. I guess we're ready to move on to Mortal Kombat now. Um, so I gotta get this thing in the basement. We're probably not gonna, it's probably not gonna happen in this video. I gotta get someone over here to help me. I wanna bring this down and the computer space ball and maybe bring the Bronco out. Um, Everything works fine. All right, guys. That's going to do it for this Restore series. What do you think? Did we do okay? <laughs> I think it looks beautiful, guys. I really do. It's such a handsome game, isn't it? So, all right, let's, let's hang out. Let's go to the basement. We'll do some viewer mail. And, uh, yeah, we'll just hang out. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Let's go back down to the basement. All right, guys, there you have it. That was part number two, the grand finale of the Atari Cloak and Dagger Restar. What'd you guys think, huh? You know, honestly, I think it looks pretty badass. I, I cannot wait to get that down here. I need to get some help, but, you know, I, I got to get the pinball machine out of here, the Bronco, bring that back to the garage, bring the Cloak and Dagger down here, bring the computer space ball down here. We're going to just kind of fill up this spot right here. And then I have a grail coming, guys. That's right, a grail is on its way. And uh, we'll be talking about that in the next week or two. I'm actually very excited for this game. It's a game I've been looking for for a long time. And we'll be talking about that over the next couple weeks. So before we do the viewer mail, I want to just talk about this stuff because you guys sent me some packages. I thought we'd do a little bit of show and tell here. Um, if you guys want to send me stuff, you can email me at blkdog7 at gmail.com. Actually, no. John at johnsarcade.com <laughs> and I'll give you guys my little uh, P.O. box. So, all right, the first one here, it comes with a handwritten letter. Look at that. People don't do that anymore. Anyway, it says, John, hi there. My husband and I have been watching John's Arcade for years. We love arcade pinball games, so naturally we're huge fans of your channel. Your repair restoration videos have helped so much during our own arcade cabinet restoration process. As thanks, and just because, I wanted to send you some of my arcade Nintendo-inspired prints. I recently started an Etsy shop to sell my original artwork, mostly gaming, anime, geek-inspired artwork. If you're interested in checking it out, uh, you can search Etsy for Simply J Sketch, okay? Simply J Sketch, or go to Etsy.com slash shop slash simply j sketch again thanks so much for making great videos and sharing your love for video games we really appreciate what you do hope you enjoy your prints thanks again jordan p.s i also included my retro gamer buttons also available in my etsy shop all right so jordan well thank you very much let's check out what she sent so she does these kind of like nintendo or video game inspired prints here and here's her retro gamer button thank you very much here's a chain chomp <laughs> boy that's cute i like that i uh, i like this one here balloon fight <laughs> we're gonna have to find a place to hang this stuff i need to buy frames um we should put that by the red tent right um this one's great burger time <laughs> we have the the uh, not so happy egg the indifferent uh hot dog and uh the angry pickle, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Jordan, look what else is in here? Anything else? And, and her business card. So Jordan, thank you very much for these prints. I will definitely find a place to put these on the wall. Thank you. And be sure to check out her Etsy shop, which is, s s what was it again? Simply, simply J Sketch. All right, the next one here was two boxes. <laughs> I, when I picked this up, I'm like, what the heck? This is a lot of stuff. <laughs> it was heavy. <laughs> so, he says, John, I wrote you a week ago regarding some items I hope would help you. Working in IT full-time and at a movie production company part-time, I know it is super important to have the right tool for the right job, just, as, you've had, just ha as you have said many times. Watching your journey with the journey monitor and your struggle with the polo had me and I am sure everyone else frustrated. Tell me about it. Man, I do not want to... The thought of revisiting that Mortal Kombat right now, working on... You know, it, listen, we're going to do the Mortal Kombat next, but 
We're not starting with that monitor. <laughs> your determination is undeniable, and it is why your channel is loved by so many. My twin brother Lenny and I wanted to donate some tools, well thanks guys, that will make things at home and at the hangar easier in appreciation for all you do. I hope the enclosed items are something you do not have and you can use in the future. I have enclosed, enclosed two brand new collapsible six foot light stands with two swivel clamp heads that can hold the two provided shatterproof mirrors, oh my God, to help you calibrate in style, picture included. So here's the, the picture, okay, so it's like a, it's like a light stand, like a tripod type thing, and you clamp on a mirror. Yeah, I could have used that when we did the, the journey because I was, I was using a Quake CD. He says, place these in front while you work the magic in the back and throw away that Quake CD in the trash. I will never throw that Quake CD away. I've had that thing since day one. Maybe it'll make it in time for the, the journey monitor color calibration video. Leave a stand at home and leave one in the truck to take to the hangar. Well, thanks, man. Uh, to help keep your precious machines in good shape and save the earth while you're at it, paper towels, no matter how soft, are made from wood and pulp fiber fibers, cleaning plexiglass. Uh, plastic can result in scratches and swirl marks. We clean every surface with super fine microfiber at the studio. To avoid that, I have included the six biggest and best microfiber towels that we use. Awesome. Right, we're going to go through this in a second. Okay, that's pretty cool. They can be washed and hung dry over and over. And best of all, <clears throat> it will not damage, it will not do damage and add to your waste footprint. Don't scratch those precious gems you work so hard on. Yeah, I love paper towels. I probably went through like a giant roll in this episode. I have included a magnetic mat with screw quadrants and a dry erase marker for those super detailed disassemblies. I also included four super magnetic dishes that can be stuck vertical wherever you choose. In the event you drop another screw, I've included two retractable magnetic grabbers, one for home and one for your hanger bag. Last but not least, I love plastic zip ties. They have a place in some situations, but they can dig deep into cables and it never fails when you need to reorganize. You need to find cutters to cut them and they go to the landfill. I've included 100 Velcro straps in the hopes they can make life easier and re Wow, this is very thoughtful stuff, guys, Trevor and Lenny. Your videos are something uh, that makes our week bearable. Hoping my bro and I can get up there and meet you personally at BroFest 2018. Thanks for all you do. Bulk meat for life. Trevor Williams and Lenny Williams, dirt naps. Well, guys, this is some thoughtful stuff. So let, let's go through here. I'm actually excited about this. The microfiber cloth. <laughs> I don't know why. That sounds like a good time, man. Yeah, I you know I do go through so many paper towels. This is the big magic fiber. It's an ultra general, gentle, fine microfiber, especially designed to clean any surface you want. <laughs> Let's take a look here. Oh wow. Oh my god. Nice. I want like a uh, pajamas made out of this. It's so soft. <laughs> Should we try it out? What, what can we what can we wipe down? Wow, this is a nice cloth, man. You guys aren't kidding. I can I can already feel the cloth. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And you say I wash this and oh man. Now now what if I want to use Windex with this though? Because I, I you know I'm kind of a I, I like my chemicals. <laughs> well, thank you for the magic fibers and then. He sent me a bunch of those, so we'll definitely use those in the videos for sure. But I, again, I'm, I'm wondering about using them with Windex or something. Probably a no-no, right? Um, so we got some microfibers. Thank you, guys. And then here's some acrylic mirrors. God, I, you know what? I need these badly, honestly, because I... First of all, I lose mirrors, okay? I, I've, I've had a mirror or two down here. I have no idea where they are. So I'm going to take your advice. I'm going to put one of these in the garage and maybe one in my bag. Oh, these are nice. Look at that. And they don't they they can't break. They're like acrylic. Um Yeah, Source One acrylic safety mirror. Now he sent me these little clamps here, right? So we're supposed to clip them on this. Cause over here, my god, he sent me these light stands. Boy, I wonder if I could use this in the garage with lights too. But he sent me these like awesome professional light stand. Look look at this, guys. I mean, can you believe this? So, so we're going to have to set this up at, at some point here. Um, I'm just kind of opening this up here. Let's, let's take a look. So this is, these are, I, I'm guessing it's kind of like a tripod scenario, right? And then he wants me to clamp. Okay, so we got two of these.
Wow, guys, this is something else. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, that's slick. So these are, let's, let's take a look here. I just dropped one. So that kind of goes like that. And then, let's see here. I see, so we got different tiers of height here. Ooh, look at that. So we could raise this up. <laughs> it's like having a little invisible hand helper. And then we could put this, God, this is clever, guys. Then we could put this on here. I see, we're gonna have to take this thread off. All right, so it's gonna go on here like so. We'll just kind of do it like that for now. It's wrong because I gotta take this threaded tip off. I'm trying to see how it's supposed to attach here. Oh, we could just do it like that. I see. And then this, let's see. Oh yeah, you guys thought of this. <laughs> and then like that, and then we can take our mirror, clamp it on here, and then raise this to the right height, and I can adjust the monitor hands-free. <laughs> guys, you, you thought of something here. <laughs> I like it. So we'll definitely keep that in the garage. And then let's kind of go on here. What else is in the box? Guys, this is too much, honestly. This is crazy. Thank you very much. These are great. Uh, these little magnetic, uh, like, ashtrays. <laughs> They're good for screws and butts. So these will definitely come in handy in the garage. I'll stick these all over my, my toolbox. Um, magnetic pickup tool, yeah, I do drop stuff a lot. So we'll put one in my toolbox and one in my hanger bag. Um, more microfibers. These are the Velcro uh, twist ties instead of using the, the zip strips that I like so much. I guess we'll have a smaller footprint with these. Oh, these are slick. Ooh, how's that? Oh, I see, then you, you cut them. Hey, that's slick, I like that. And then a dry erase board to keep track of stuff. That, that actually, you know, I should have a dry erase board. I, I should like write my projects on here, you know, cause I'm, I'm just, I'm always like forgetting like what should we do next or what's broken. It'd be nice to have like a, a board down here that kind of lists all the projects and little things that need fixing. Like the mad plants right now, I gotta replace the sound amp on it. Um, well guys, thank you very much for that. Really thoughtful and, and you guys are amazing. Honestly, I have the best viewers, so thank you guys so much. Um, Trevor and Lenny Williams. <laughs> I like it guys, thank you very, very much. All right, why don't we move on? Let's do some viewer mail. Um, if you guys want to participate in the viewer mail, you need to email them to me at BLK, actually, no, John at johnsarcade.com. You need to email them to me at john at johnsarcade.com. Uh, first one's from Michael. Uh, Hello, John. Greetings from Texas. So I'd like to just say uh, that you have brought, that, that you have so brought this hobby to the masses and made your videos fun and entertaining. And I don't think you realize uh, now how much you control prices as much as John Exidy. <laughs> you know, I made John's website, the, the price guide. <laughs> so I actually contributed to John Exidy's price guide, if that's what you're talking about. Uh, when you show us all your cool cabinets or a game, it makes me and I'm sure others like it and want it. For example, I have just acquired a stunning cloak and dagger that I would have never thought about collecting, <laughs> lol. Anyway, keep up the great work. Yeah, you know, cloak and dagger's pretty great, man. Congrats on picking that up. Uh, my favorite videos are the ones on the road showing people's collections or great arcades all over the country. Going to CAX this weekend. Take care, Michael. Yeah, I miss California Extreme. I heard it was a great time. Probably go uh, next year. I, I was trying to slow down a little bit with the traveling this year because we just came back from Atlanta and fun spots. So next year we'll probably hit CAX. And then, you know, this year too, I'm going to Manchester, guys. That's right, mates. We're gonna we're gonna have some bitters. <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm working on the details on that. That's pretty much a done deal. So anyway, Michael, thanks a lot and uh, enjoy your cloak and dagger. 
Uh, next one's from uh, Mattias. Hi, John. I'm 11 years old and I live in Chicago. I also enjoy watching your videos a lot and like seeing how you restore games. I also love the walkthrough of games and someday I wish to have an arcade game, uh, arcade like yours, but right now I'm actually building a pinball machine out of cardboard because I love watching videos about pinball tables and eventually I want to get my favorite pinball table called Medieval Madness and I loved your video on it. Yeah, well, thanks, man. Yeah, we did an unboxing video of Medieval Madness. And you know what? The, the cardboard pinball thing, that's a thing. That's like a real thing. Like, there's lots of videos about people making uh, pinball machines out of cardboard. It's actually pretty amazing with, like, rubber bands and stuff. Uh, I also like seeing the classic games like Ms. Pac-Man and Donkey Kong. One of my favorite types of videos you do is on the road. I love how you go to all these places to play arcade games. And you are by far my favorite YouT YouTuber. Thank you so much for reading this uh, from Mattias. Well, thanks, Mattias. Uh, thanks for the kind words. Yeah, we need to do some on-the-road videos here soon. We'll, we'll, we'll go somewhere. <laughs> uh, next one is from Adam. Hey, John, I'm just getting into the hobby. I've been, I, I've been uh, binging on your videos for a while, and I just purchased my Golden T, own Golden T4 complete cabinet, as well as a Silver Strike bowling cabinet. My intention is com to combine them into a single cabinet like you've done, and I've been wondering how you had the split marquee made. Now, you may have covered it in a video I've yet to see, but I know you pointed it out in at least one video, but I don't remember if you said where you got it from or how it was made. I'm thinking of doing that myself. Uh, did you have someone custom make it? Do you have to print it on a specific translucent paper for it to be backlit properly? Thanks for all the great arcade content. Keep it up, Adam. So, Adam, let's go over to my golden tea. Now, I don't have a split marquee on my golden tea, but I have made a split marquee. And, uh, my golden tea is a uh, golden tea four dedicated and it also has silver strike bowling so it's very much like what you want to do okay but if you look on the top here i have a, a golden tea four complete marquee okay and then in the middle i put the silver strike one okay because the silver strike bowling the dedicated cabinet had a thing here like this and then a marquee on the top and then on the sides i also put um the silver strike side art okay and then we have the golden tee up here so i think it looks pretty legit and i have the switcher in here actually um i just replaced the monitor chassis on this because for the longest time like like for seven years i had the wrong chassis in here i had a 25 inch chassis and um this is a 27 inch ma monitor and i couldn't fill vertically top or bottom this thing's a little tweaky but i have to adjust this monitor and the horizontal hold is a little bit off. See it right there? I gotta go in the chassis. It's in a really weird spot. But this monitor looks fantastic. It looks a little washed out. Could probably turn the screen down a hair. But compared to the monitor I had, the chassis I had in here before, the colors are way more vibrant and the picture fills the whole thing vertically. I gotta turn the screen down. I could just see right here. And I gotta get in there and adjust the horizontal hold. But anyway, back to your question, okay? I actually don't have a marquee like that, but I have, on my golden tee, but I have made a marquee like that. I, I did make one like that a while ago, okay? Right here. And this is the one I used to have in my Street Fighter cabinet, and, and I had Street Fighter and Tetris in one game, okay? And I actually made this myself. I, I did this in Illustrator. I went online, I found the best Street Fighter Alpha 2 marquee I could find, and I took a screenshot of of Tetris and MAME, and I put that on here and I put a little Switch Games 1 and 2. I had this printed at Game On Graphics, and um, they did a pretty okay job. And and so if you send them the artwork in the right format, you know, 300 DPI, um, raster or vector, illustrator, whatever, they'll print it on the right material. Their material is okay, though. Um, it, it is a bit trans... It, it, it looks a bit washed out after you, you backlight it. Um, I think if you can get Rich's attention at this old game, he'll do a much better job. But if you do send the artwork to Game on Graphics, th they're pretty quick, and you'll probably get it a lot faster. It's just that I didn't think the material was, was kind of translucent. It, it was actually too translucent, because um, when you backlit it, it kind of blew out the artwork a little bit, but it looked good. It was presentable. So GameOnGraphics.com is going to be probably the best service out there for that type of a thing. But you're going to have to make the artwork yourself. You know, Go find the Golden Tee uh, Marquee artwork somewhere, find the Silver Strike, kind of combine the two together in Photoshop or Illustrator, and then send it off. So. 
All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. This is a long one, isn't it? Um, again, if you guys uh, want to send viewer mail, send it to john at johnsarcade.com. That's john at johnsarcade.com. It can be a question, can be a comment, can be whatever. All right, guys, that's it. We're done. Be sure to check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders, at videogameoutsiders.com. We have an app on iOS on the iOS store and Google Play. Search for Video Game Outsiders. The app is completely free. Um, you do get a regularly scheduled podcast that happen every week and then also bonus content if you subscribe. It's $1.99 a month. It's a great, great way to support us at, at videogameoutsiders.com. Anyway, that's it. I'm done. I'll see you guys very soon. Later and bye. <laughs>